Welcome back to The Only Way to Play. I'm Madge. I lose the game so you don't have to. Huskar is a rare breed in that he's a ranged strength hero. He seems to have attended the Ganondorf school for final bosses because his whole playstyle revolves around getting hurt enough to go beast mode to deal his damage. A good Huskar knows how to manage his HP and knows when to be low and when to be healthy. He is the adrenaline junkies hero. 90% of the match you spend a hit from death and 90% of your games you'll be teetering on losing. And that's what makes it fun. Technically this is the first only ways to play guide. Most people play Huskar as this high risk, high reward core hero and usually, so do I. But there's so much more to Huskar if you're not afraid of a bit of controversy. And being a guy who works on the internet, I love my controversy. Where people use Huskar as this balls deep man fighter, I play him as a hero capable of pushing and keeping constant pressure on the enemy because he never needs to go back to base. I also build him with Dagon. Oh boy, being able to pick Huskar is a rare treat for me. He's counted by nearly every hero in one way or another, but he can be impossible to beat if they pick wrong, like a Techies versus a 5 melee lineup. Huskar needs no allies, Huskar only needs victims. That being said, anything that can keep Huskar alive is good. Wisp, Dazzle and Oracle spring into mind is the best for that. Necrophos is also a healer, but he's powerful with Ags Huskar for the potential to immediately kill someone with both of their ults. When Huskaring, I like to assign heroes on this power pyramid with the top third with 5 points, the second worth 2, and the bottom third worth 1. If the enemy team ends up with 5 points, I just don't pick him. The top slot has Ancient Apparition, Bloodseeker, Windranger, and Chaos Knight. This carry build rides on the idea that you constantly keep your life up through armlet toggling and the items you buy. AA shoots that right in the foot, so we go to build B. Bloodseeker will nearly always have vision on you playing both ways, and he's completely physical and pure damage. Also makes uh, taking Roshan sneakily impossible. Windranger has a ridiculous stun that will always always seem to connect. She can evade your only form of damage and sustain through lifestyle and you just try and arm the toggle between two hits of focus fire. Huskar struggles to deal with illusions too and Chaos Knight hits hard in the physical damage department. These heroes all but pin you down and force you to pick something else. Phantom Lance would actually go in the top slot if not for Burning Spear lingering even after he's used Doppelgang so you'll always know which is the true Phantom Lancer. For this matchup I go Crimson Guard or Maelstrom into Mjolnir. The rest of tier 2 are physical damage beasts. Phantom Assassin, Templar Assassin, that sort of thing, as well as heroes with a lot of pure damage. Pudge, Omni Knight, Timbersaw. The last tier consists of your typical Bash Lords, Disablers, and anyone who can reduce armor. The perfect enemy team for a Huskar would consist of a Zeus, Skywrath, Gyrocopter, Crystal Maiden, and I don't know, a, a Techies. Here is a clip from a close alternative. As with every only way to play guide I've done, you can find this one in game as well as on YouTube, the link is down below. Any Huskar build will tell you the same thing more or less, nevertheless here is my build. W E W Q W R W E E E Q Q Q R stats R and then stats until maxed. Burning Spear is practically always maxed first. Berserker's Blood is maxed first on the rare occasion where Burning Spear isn't. This is for when the team has a lot of constant nuke damage or an abundance of Laguna Blades or Fingers of Death. One value point is taken in Inner Vitality and then maxed last as one point gives you at least 184 HP on a level 6 Huskar with around 30 strength. But level 2 gives you 208. A pretty pitiful increase. We get life break once at level 6 and then we don't touch it until everything else is maxed. All levels of life break give the same damage. The only thing that changes is the slow amount and duration. And not by much. Inner Vitality can be cast twice on the same hero but it'll just refresh the duration. It also factors in total HP on the fly and adjusts the regeneration accordingly. You don't have to pop it as you get to 40% health, it'll just kick in when you hit the threshold. Huskar's attack range is 400 but his Burning Spear is 450. Why? I haven't the foggiest. Burning Spear calculates damage every second regardless of when the charges after the first were thrown. To cancel salves and the like, you would need 4 to 2 to 2 to 1 stack depending on the level. Berserker's Blood will always be on you. at 100 
100% health, you have one stack. At 87, you get the second. And from that point, every 7% missing gains you another. Life break cannot be disjointed unless the target makes the distance between Huskar and themselves greater than 1400. So TPs and some blinks. Life break purges debuffs on Huskar on cast. Life break self damage is magical, meaning with Berserker's blood maxed and 50% HP on a 1000 health Huskar, you practically take no damage casting it. Nearly always armlet after casting life break. No point giving yourself more health to lose even more health casting your ultimate. Speaking of armlets, why does Chaos Knight have an armlet cosmetic when the item seems to be made for Huskar? Honestly, with all three of these builds, armlets are recommended. I've even rushed it before boots in some games. Huskar is armlet the hero. Before that though, we get to our starting items. It's this toss up between four guides and you'd assume with me being the guide publisher, I'd decide on this before I make the video. The steam guide is an armlet rush build. Tango's blades of attack for plus nine damage and an iron branch with the leftover money. This leaves you bare in the armor department and we supplement that with our armlet fated helm of iron will as soon as possible. Armlet is our first big item nearly every single time. On the occasion where it's not, it's morbid mask into helm of the dominated because you've been banished to the jungle. Your core items for typical Huskar consist of a helm anyway, before finishing Satan BKB, Heaven Cellbird, that sort of thing. Armor, Strength and HP Regeneration. These are the traits we look for in our items. You'll notice that Armlet has all three. I want to take this opportunity to tell you, you should never be going back to base with this build. Come Armlet, you'll always have spare HP pocketed for when you need it, and come any lifesteal, you can be full health on a dime. So far I've talked about the run of the mill Huskar pickups, but let's get experimental man. Huskar, like Morphling, is a carry who has the qualifications to deal a lot of magical damage if you build him right. So how do we do that? Hold on to your official Dota guides and hold off on calling me a witch, but I like to go Dagon Ag's Veil on Huskar against heroes I know I can't manfight or endure. Anyone who could stun or kill me faster than I could kill them. And I guess in hindsight, if heroes like that were in my games, I probably shouldn't have picked Huskar anyway. Oh well. Veil is a must for the armor it gives and the amplification to your only damage in the game. Burning Spear and Life Break. You could even rush this and have it up pre-10 minutes if you wanted to forego armlet, and it's a legitimate strategy if your team benefits from the active. Veil, surprisingly, is a great item on Huskar. Unfortunately, it's only great on him and like three other people. After Veil, go Dagon for squishies or eggs for tankies and pick up an Orchid for more amp damage and for those mobile opponents. There are two initiation and escape items I'd recommend for Huskar. Four star for core and Glimmer Cape for Caster. Force Staff is a cheap way of dealing with heroes with Blink that aren't falling for your fake out life breaks. It's also useful to get away from the barrage of damage to get off an armlet toggle or a TP. But technically us Huskar players aren't really allowed to recommend leaving a fight unless it's in a body bag. Glimmer Cape is good on a Huskar casting life break constantly for the active. To get in, pop a guy and get out and the passive magic resistance. With Glimmer Cape, you break invis when you cast life break, but you'll be invisible and affected by the bonus magic resistance as you land. With the innate magic resistance of the item, you lose basically no health at around 70% HP. Gross, right? Aghanims is the obvious partner to Glimmer Cape as it allows you to life break for free with cape every four seconds. Don't even get me started on Octarine Core in the mix. You'd gain health using your ult on heroes tanky enough. Plus your burning spear would give you life steal as well. Where Satanic is the ultimate in-game core Huskar build item, Octarine Core is the ultimate caster Huskar item. I haven't talked much about boots because there's no real discussion to be had. No boots are really that noteworthy on Huskar until the point where you've gotten all your other items and have time to go back for Greaves. Greaves seem to be made for Huskar. They give more armor, an HP regen at 20% HP, and Huskar wants both of those and can easily waver around 20% HP for those abilities. Do not rush these items though. Plain Boots will get Huskar through a typical game and Greaves aren't really as groundbreaking when 20% health means that Huskar on 200 HP. Also, use the buff wisely. You can skip a BKB if you're careful with your inventory slot purge can't purge a silence by casting life break now can you this segment has gone on for far too long so if you want more information on the rest of the items i've written a small biz in the actual guide but before we move on do not go earn on huska earn is useless as huska should be buying items that heal him during fights He's already got enough to stay healthy out of a fight, although whether he wants to or not is a different story, and Earn is disabled as soon as you take hero or tower damage. All three lanes are open to you, so where do you go? Mid's the typical lane, but Huskar is a hero that wants to stack as many hits on his opponent as possible. The distance between the tier 1 towers at mid counteracts that a bit, don't you think? So how about the side lanes? Either's good, as long as you have more than or equal to the number of heroes the enemy has on that lane. Huskar can 1v1 like a champ. Huskar can't. 2v1. Yet. 
Huskar at level 1 is surprisingly bleak considering he's regarded as this early mid game powerhouse. Burning spear without your passive is like pepper without salt. With this in mind, don't bother contesting level 1 rune, just block your wave. The intention here is that you want equilibrium as close to your tower as possible, so come level 3 you can have more time to wail on the enemy as they run back to tower. Level 3 because you need a level of your passive and because burning spear level 2 is double the damage of level 1. In higher MMRs, much to my dismay, people acknowledge that a typical Huskar is more afraid of them than they are of him like a bear. He starts the game with one armor and hurts himself harassing others. This is another reason I don't like running a mid. As soon as you hit a tier where the players are aware of this, Huskar is meat. So we farm up, harassing the opponent twice every time they hit you once to keep them wary, and last hitting with Burning Spear if you're playing ultra conservatively and needing that extra 50 range. If we think we can get kills, we pick up a pair of boots, but if we're content with free farm, we can just sit on our lane. That is, until you get your armlet. I feel like I could call this guide the only way to play armlet, and it would still all be correct. Build armlet like this. Blades to helm to gloves to recipe and a smoke, and let's leave lane. It's 8 minutes in and you've just picked up your armlet and a smoke. Let's roche! You literally only need armlet. If you could buy an armlet and smoke with your starting gold, you could take Roshan as Huskar before the game starts. It's just dangerous as hell. If you've guessed armlet toggling in between hits, you're on point, although there's a bit more to it. You cannot do this if there is a Bloodseeker around for obvious reasons. Walk into the pit, attack Roshan like you normally would, walk as close as possible so he can get you low. When you're around 400 HP, push yourself into this little corner. If you've done it right, you will clip into the wall. Roshan will now walk up to you and hit you three and a half times. You'll see what I mean. Now don't move your mouse. Huskar and Roshan's attack speeds are not in any way aligned, so there's potential that Huskar will move from his spot when Roshan walks back. This messes up positioning because Roshan will now hit you four times or more. It's always weird suggesting a strategy that tells you to do less than you normally do, but trust me, find your alcove, click there, and do not move the mouse at all. And every time Huskar moves out of this little hidey hole, put him right back in his place. Every time Roshan walks back, armlet toggle. You don't have to do any clutch armlet toggles in between blows and you don't have to worry about getting perma bash those three hits. Because every armlet toggle gives you back 475 HP and that's enough to tank the hits. I implore you to practice this in a lobby. There's only one way that this can go right and a thousand ways it can go wrong. One misstep, three armlet presses instead of two and Roshan feasts on some berserker's blood. You don't have to use it in vitality and in fact you shouldn't as the heal is completely wasted by armlet. Not using it during Roshan also means that you'll have it for the aftermath. If your luck is anything like my luck, there'll always be a hero checking bot rune as you finish up, and you're not walking out of that pit on full health, ever. You'll need that inner vitality. Here is where it gets fun. Since we just took Roshan, we'd usually head bot and take those two towers. Just watch them try and defend against you. Nothing short of an army can stop you with Armlet and Aegis. After Boots and Morbid Mask, that just becomes more apparent. Assess the situation and dive that tier 1 if you think you can take the heroes defending it. If nobody's defending it at all, then you can just tank the tower 100% until it falls by letting your creeps take their creeps aggro and just armlet toggling in between a few tower hits. If you want practice toggling, then a tower is your best bet. Slow attack speed, slow projectile speed, and they telegraph each attack with a massive ball of fire. It's hard to miss. Just remember, the creeps need to be preoccupied. Where tower hits are loud and proud, those ranged creep attacks are silent but violent. It's a rite of passage in a young Huskar player's life to die to a stray 2 damage ranged creep attack. Also keep in mind invis heroes and invis runes. Being careful here would be tanking just 1 or 2 hits before armlet toggling back to 475 HP. Armlet toggle fast too. A smart player will understand your pattern so you want to make that moment of vulnerability as tiny as possible. I'd recommend getting as much done while you have the Aegis as possible. Take all 6 out of towers if you can. Your Aegis isn't a ticket for a second life in a teamfight. It's more of a get out of jail for messed up armlet toggling free card. Get all 6 towers, ward up aggressively and then choke them out of resources by farming their jungle while you wait for the next stage that you'll use to push their base. Now that you're farming carefree, I have a moment to talk about two other tactics. 
Caster Huskar is an interesting breed. It's almost the antithesis of the normal way to play Huskar. Get in, burst a guy down, get out. If you're fully committing to this build, you won't even have the item slots for armlet or any lifesteal until Octarine Core, so your health will come from inner vitality charges. Arcane Boots into Greaves is already what I prefer, but with this build, Arc Boots have to come very quick, especially if you did end up with that Glimmer Cape. Counters to this way of playing are of course BKBs, Blade Mails, and sadly enough, Glimmer Capes, the traitors. When these items come up, play around durations and try to pick the targets that don't have them. Caster Huskar works as initiator, but works much better if the fight starts without him. If someone else on your team causes their supports to cape their carries, the supports become your targets. If you were to initiate, they just cape themselves. Oh god. Oh god. Support Huskar? A support with no silences, no stuns, no crowd control until level 6. I love it. Huskar support builds as tanky as possible, forgoes attack damage and just harasses with orb walking and burning spear. It's pretty gross dude. Instead of armlet we go mech, instead of home of the dominator we go vlads. It's now viable on ranged heroes as of 6.84 where it gives them 10% lifesteal. Mech and vlads helps your team push, helps you stay alive in team fights while you're still ulting and casting burning spear, and they will help you move to the jungle at the point where you're like, oh, well this was enough supporting for one day, let's get this armlet. So it's come to this. Three different Huskar builds, three different ways to play, and about three hours in this booth messing up my lines. If you've got your armlet, now's probably a good time to just leave it on in fights. Even when there's only one person attacking you, I doubt he'll be slow enough for you to toggle in between hits. Besides, Huskar shines in this moment. He hits hard enough to deal damage without needing to be close to death, and when he hits the danger zone, he really lives up to the phrase going berserk. Without being stun locked from 30% HP to 0% HP, Huskar deals enough damage to constantly waver around this point with lifesteal. If you're a caster, your job is still to get in and get out. Pop a core if possible, and if they've got BKB, pop a support. If you've gone cast a Huskar, there's an actual hard carry who's taking the blows for you, so chuck your heal on him as you dart in and out. If you're a support Huskar, you're no longer a support Huskar. Greaves is good enough to hold your ground, and since we're saving the active for the middle of the fight, you've got a lot of leverage here, and please, for the love of any god you believe in, don't fucking dive! If all goes well, Hooray! You win! And if it doesn't, well, Huskar is a hard hero. He's amazingly easy to mess up. It can get frustrating. We've all turned off our armlet when we meant to turn it on. We've all forgotten about the invisible bounty hunter who hits you as soon as you turn off armlet. But you've just got to remember that no matter how many times you mess up, you are the only person who's been in every single game you've won. Finally, I'm done with this video. I recorded everything chronologically so you can actually hear my voice get slower and more hoarse as the video goes along. I started this guide after I finished Wraith King and in the middle of it you probably heard I won a trip to the International 5. Which means from this point on, all of my videos will be shorts used to fund equipment like cameras and personnel like cameramen so I can make the most out of this opportunity of going from little old New Zealand to Seattle of all places for a week. I'll be filming most of the journey, and I'll actually be rooming with a bunch of Dota personalities while I'm there, so there'll be a lot of content like interviews and tours in and out of Key Arena in the tournament. At this point, I'd like to plug my Patreon page, like I do every guide, but this time I'd like to mention that I'd really appreciate it if you contributed from now until August if you like my content. It doesn't have to be much, but with Patreon and your help I can afford to get the equipment I need, be able to pay people helping me out, and be able to give you the content at the level I'm hoping for. You eagle-eyed folks will notice that I'm not really an astronaut in real life, and that this is just an animation. I will buy and create a unique astronaut costume for the event if I get enough money. So yeah, if you can, read my Patreon page and donate for the next two months or so, and hopefully I can reward you with unique and edgeco quality content. In four days from the release of this video, I'll have more about that, but to people not really interested, I'll see you in a month with a guide to either Clockwork, Mid Beastmaster, or an hour-long special episode on everything there is to Oracle. Bottom rags is getting hammered. Go on for more. Yes! 
Radiance bottom rags. 